This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and now for something a little bit different. We don't do a lot of mobile workstation reviews here, but this is the Lenovo P-Series. And we have done them, including the S's, which tend to be the lower power dual core processor one. This is the full Monty. This is a quad core with NVIDIA Quadro graphics inside. It's the Lenovo ThinkPad. P51. But you know, it's not that big and it's not that heavy, but there's an awful lot of power inside. We're going to look at it now. So the ThinkPad P51 is a 15.6 inch mobile workstation. There's also P71, which as you might guess is a 17 inch model. The 15 inch competes with the HP ZBook 15 G3 and the Dell Precision 5520. The Dell is thinner, it's prettier, it's got a little that XPS thing going on there, but uh, the compromise there is cooling, which is not so much for the ThinkPad. So there you have that. Inside there's Intel 7th generation 45 watt quad core i7 CPUs, or you can get Get the Intel Xeon option. We actually have the highest end configuration there. So you've got the E3-5505M for the Xeon and the E3-1535M V6, which is what we have. Or you can get the usual Core i7-7700HQ or the 7820HK overclockable CPU. Lots of RAM capability here, up to 64 gigs, obviously error correcting if you go for the Xeon CPU and NVIDIA Quadro M2200 graphics in ours which is on Maxwell architecture. You have to go up to the 17 inch if you want to go for that Pascal architecture. The base model in this starts in the 1300s in terms of price, and that one has the lower end Quadro M1200 graphics. Ours is pretty well decked out as far as you can go, and it's about $2,500. You can see a variety of configurations there on screen depending on what's more important to you in terms of display resolution, CPU, all that sort of thing. You can get with the 1080p display, these are matte non-touch displays, or our really excellent wide gamut 4K display, and I'll talk about the display later, but let me tell you, it is nice. The minute you look at that, you just say, oh yeah, good times. So who's this for? The scientific modeling crowd, CAD, 3D rendering, video editing, heavy computational tasks. This is not really the same market necessarily as something like the Dell XPS 15 or any slimmer, more sexy looking consumer laptop, the, the Surface Book 2, although it's not that much bigger. And it's not super duper heavy either, which is pretty impressive. This is really just shows you how far technology has come. These things used to be like an inch and a half thick monsters that nobody wanted to carry around. And this one certainly is, well, reasonably portable anyway. So we've got the traditional ThinkPad look here, that matte black finish. You've got fiberglass sort of finish on top of a magnesium alloy roll cage inside. So it's, it's sturdy, it's rigid, all that sort of thing. It's, you know, it's going to take a lot of abuse. There's just enough thickness here to allow for a good amount of cooling. We've got a lot of ventilation on the rear over here and also plenty of intakes on the bottom. And you'll notice this has an old fashioned removable service bay door here. This is nice. You don't have to take apart the whole bottom section. Mobile workstations really are geared to be upgradable and something that your IT department considers to be friendly to work on. And there's even a removable battery here. And there's two different capacities of battery available and you've got your slider switch and it pops right out. We have the higher capacity 90 watt hour battery, and that's probably what you would want to get for a machine like this. You can also get a 66 watt hour battery, but you know, the price difference isn't very much, the weight difference isn't even that much, and this is going to give you longer run times at those times when you do want to use it in the field. It does have that dedicated Quadro graphics there, again, geared towards more CAD scientific computational field kind of things. But it's got switchable graphics, so it also has Intel HD630 graphics inside, so when you're doing lighter tasks, you can get better battery life. Notice here we actually have a ThinkPad docking station for those of you who want that sort of thing. And we do have Thunderbolt 3 here with USB-C Gen 2 built in. Plenty of USB ports going on here in HDMI 1.4A port, not 2.0 on this. You've got DisplayPort, you've got Gigabit Ethernet, the usual rectangular charging connector that Lenovo has been using for a while for their laptops. And we've got DisplayPort over here too. It has an SD card slot and even some legacy things like express card slot because sometimes corporate buyers want old fashioned things like that. Now, like I said, we have that 4K display here with the wide color gamut and wow, this is a nice looking display. Now there's an optional X-Rite with Pantone color calibration device built into the deck of the machine. We saw this on the P71, the P70 that we also reviewed. So what that means is that you can run this, close the display, and I'll actually read from the display and do a basic calibration. From the factory, before it was calibrated, it actually was an excellent calibration anyway. And I calibrated it with our usual external tool and it 
calibrated just about as well as the built-in one. The built-in one is always not quite as good as a dedicated USB external device, but it's nice in a pinch. And it's an optional feature, so it's up to you as to whether you get that. It's 255 nits of brightness. That's not super bright, but the fact that it's matte really helps. You're not going to have a lot of glare that you have to combat there. And this, this is the sort of machine most people are going to be using indoors. The color gamut is the real star here. And wow, it's not just full sRGB. It's 100% of Adobe RGB. That is very rare. Sometimes we see 94, 95% we get excited. This is 100% and 96% of NTSC. So for those of you who are doing professional video production or anything where you need color accuracy, you've, you've got it here in abundance. By the way, there's no PWM here that we could detect, so you're not going to see in that flickering that bothers some people's eyes. In terms of performance, well, we have the top of line Intel Xeon in here, and well, it's going to do well on benchmarks, and as you can see, it does. Now, the Quadro GPU in here really is designed, again, for folks doing CAD, 3D professional work. This is not so much a gaming laptop. If you're going to compare it to a gaming laptop and you want to do some gaming on the side, it's closest approximation would be the NVIDIA GTX 1050. But don't be fooled to thinking that that means it's not a good graphics card. Because you can see how it does on tests like Cinebench, which is really more a test of professional rendering graphics, that sort of thing. And it does actually better than a GTX 1050 would do. But that's the difference there. When you're working with Quadro, it's really more about the stability and the optimization for folks who are using professional creation tool, content creation tools. The speakers on this are stereo, but they're not really very loud and full. Now, ThinkPads often have surprisingly good speakers for so-called business laptops. This is not one of them, so thank goodness there's a headphone jack. When it comes to the battery, like I said, it's refreshing that it actually is removable. You could swap in spares if you were taking this out in the field to do work, say, doing video editing out in the field, shooting, that sort of thing. Uh, we have the 90 watt hour battery. Again, this does have switchable graphics. So doing light tasks on it, it actually runs about five and a half to six hours on a charge, which is pretty darn good for a mobile workstation. Now, if you're doing serious 3D rendering on this, obviously your run times are gonna be a lot shorter. But again, this isn't the sort of machine where I think a lot of people spend a whole lot of time unplugged doing that sort of work. It comes with a 170 watt charger, which is appropriate for a machine with this sort of graphics and CPU horsepower inside. This is one of the few machines, by the way, where you can actually lay the display completely flat, open 180 degrees for whatever use you find, maybe for giving presentations, I don't know. The keyboard on this is the usual excellent ThinkPad keyboard. Oh, nice key travel on here, pretty deep, but not ultra deep either, because this is not a super fat machine. It kind of feels just right. You've got an embedded number pad on this as well. Of course, it's a backlit keyboard. It's a dream to type on, and the usual... ThinkPad style trackpad with the little nav point pointer for those of you who like that and the dedicated buttons up top for the nav point pointer and then you've got a three button trackpad down below. Usually we see two buttons on ThinkPad but for the case of this one here we've got three because it kind of makes sense for those of you who might be doing some sort of content creation stuff with 3D and rendering applications where that center button is useful. So opening it up is very easy to remove this access door. I'm taking out the battery. You don't have to, but it's generally a good idea if you're going to be taking apart the internals of your laptop. Notice here there's a keyboard drain hole. It's one of the spill-resistant keyboards from Lenovo. So Phillips head screws, just a couple of them here, and then you pry off. you got a little pry spot right there. And voila, your internals. So you have two SSD M2 drive bays. We have one Samsung PM961 SSD. That's the fastest you can get currently. Again, a variety of configurations on Lenovo when you build to order, and you can upgrade it obviously yourself afterwards. We got a two and a half inch drive bay here. The cable, however, is not included if you don't order it with the drive. So you're going to have to source the cable yourself if you want to add a drive after the fact. We have RAM slots and two of them underneath the keyboard and we have two more here. So a total of 64 gigs total will be maximum. If you use 16 gig modules, again, ECC RAM is available if you get the Intel Xeon CPU or just your regular DDR4 RAM otherwise. So those are right available there. You get the keyboard out. You can see there's indicator right here. Here's a keyboard retaining screw here. There's another keyboard retaining screw right over here. So you loosen those first before you pop off the keyboard. And oh, the third one right there. Well, we undid the bottom three keyboard retaining screws. And it's pretty easy to get this out, actually. You just kind of slide it forward, and then you can get it out. It looks a little terrifying, but it really isn't. So nice, sturdy build here. This is really well done stuff. And here we have, actually, the Wi-Fi card is accessible from this side, so you don't have to take off the entire bottom cover. You can see the copper cooling in the two fans over here. So one screw holds this little cover, and why is this here? What is it hiding? Well, here we have it. Here's the other two RAM slots with neat little ro robust covers, and there's a second RAM module underneath here, too. So 
one more thing, and this is pretty cool. Right here we have another slot, M halfite M2 slot, and this is for the optional LTE WAN module. Uh, previously they had had problems with older versions of the P-series with interference, and they couldn't actually give you the LTE module. They've got that down. Clearly the RAM is well shielded now. I think the RAM was actually at the same, same frequency and causing problems for the older models in the P-series. And we've got our two wires already here available for that module. Now with that much horsepower inside, especially because we have the highest end Xenon option going on here and the M2200 graphics, heat, how about heat, right? Well, that, that additional thickness and pretty two ample fans and lots of copper inside mean that despite the fact that they actually allow this to TDP up not to 45 watts, but to 55 watts with bursts to 75 watts, which means they're letting it push the thermal envelope here. Temperatures are pretty good. Yeah, if I run two benchmarks concurrently, I can get the, the CPU cores to go to 90 degrees centigrade, which is on the hot side. 100 is maximum allowable, so that's still okay. But in normal use, even if you are doing rendering, it's going to be okay. But it's a little on the toasty side. It is a high-performance machine. The bottom, the bottom center area, it will get a bit hot to the touch. Probably this is a machine you're not going to use on your lap so much when you're doing really heavy-duty work. You're probably going to have it on a desk, but it will exceed human body temperature on the bottom if you're working it very hot, not hard. Not if you're doing normal things, though, like, you know, Word, Excel, Photoshop, that sort of thing. It will not get hot. Fans, you don't hear that much. They come on, they go off, they're the, a, a fairly quiet whoosh kind of sound. It's not going to bother anybody when it's really working hard and it's cooling a lot. It's not like a gaming laptop. It doesn't get screaming loud, but certainly if you're pushing it very hard, you will hear the fans, but it's acceptable for the amount of performance inside this box. So that's the Lenovo ThinkPad P51. Like I said, there is a lot of horsepower inside this thing. I mean, if you go up to Intel Xeon CPU, that Quadro M2200 graphics. You have a very powerful machine, but it's not really that bulky and thick like the mobile workstations of old. Granted, the Dell Precision has some slimmer competition, but you know what? The cooling on this is pretty darn good, and the display on this, if you go for the 4K option, really holds its own against uh, HP's Dream Color display that they use on products like their ZBook line. It's not bad if this is what you're looking for in a machine, and I know some of you are just looking for the, the horsepower over the sexy, sexy thing. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.